Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy This, That, and the Other Thing. And I've got my local Twin Cities friend. Her name is Lori Hurley. Are you there, Lori? I'm right here, Brad. Yay. Now, where in the, are you in the Twin Cities? Are you on the west side over here? I'm actually in North St. Paul. North St. Paul? Almost yeah. Wisconsin. Exactly. <laughs> kind of a little suburb of Wisconsin. So I'm over in Minnetonka, but... Of that little suburb of Edina. Yeah. yeah, that's the funny thing about the internet these days. You know, it's all of a sudden it's just bridged the gap between here and the other side of the planet. It's just bizarre. Anyways, when I do these interviews, I don't do them real long and drawn out because time is a commodity and uh, we've only got 24 hours in a day, so we got to get back to work. So I just do these as a familiarization, let people know who you are, what you do, and all that kind of thing. So the first question is, are you married and got kids? Oh, yeah. Yes, deliriously, <laughs> blissfully married for 28 years with three extraordinary children. Well, I suppose you'd have to have some kids because then you have training because we're going to be talking about family entertainment. And usually that's not a man and a woman that are a family. They have kids that makes it a family, right? <laughs> uh, that's one approach, yeah. yeah. And the kids are in the business, so yeah. So I was uh, kind of curious, how long have you been doing this? I've seen your name out there for quite a while, but how long have you been at this Entertainment uh, thing. This is our 33rd year in business. Whoa. I started when I was two, if you want to do the math and kind of figure out my age. <laughs> That's because you're so good. You know what kids like, right? <laughs> I still am one. So there's another thing I wanted to talk about, and that's the concept of types of entertainment because there's your your family entertainment that you work with, and then there's like adult entertainment, and that's not the right way to say that, but it's, it's you know, concerts and things like that. What's the difference, would you say, in family entertainment versus like, a, you know, a, a rock star coming to town doing a concert or just uh, like comedy clubs or, you know, just going out for a theater or something like that? What's the difference in family entertainment? Sure, actually, and I, and I think if, if that's the distinction you're looking for, it's not family entertainment versus rock star. It's entertainment that comes to your event. It's event entertainment. It's event entertainment where we come to your event as opposed to entertainment where I am putting on a concert, an event, a comedy show, and you come to me. So we're mobile entertainment. Okay. You come to the parties, whether you're having an, a party for children and families or whether you're hosting your school's all-night party targeting teens and teens or a mitzvah, for example, or whether you're having your holiday banquet, sales meeting, you know, trade show, expo targeting adults. Uh, our entertainment comes to you. You don't come to us. Got That's it. actually the bigger distinction. That is an interesting differentiation also because some people would, to be entertained, they'd go to theater or mm -hmm. they might go to a concert and you right. can provide. And then, bring it to you. And the concept of entertainment sometimes gets cloudy because, you know, when you get into like Hollywood entertainment, that's, you know, films and movies and acting. And it's, that's, we're talking about live entertainment with people, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, the, the other thing was kind of tied in with that when I was talking about the, the rock stars and stuff. I know that sometimes like as a magician, I get put into a corner of, uh, of usually like uh, kids entertainment oftentimes, but there's a difference between you know, a kid's entertainer and David Copperfield. So can you talk a little bit about that as far as a family entertainer versus some, sometimes people don't give the respect that I think is due. I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> but if, if you say, oh, I make kids smile, they'll go like, gee, I don't know if we can afford that. But if it's someone like, uh, you know, Bruce, String Bruce Springsteen coming to town, all of a sudden, oh, my God, the tickets are $300. Let me have two. Mm-hmm. Well, what you're really describing is what we value. So certainly there are enough people who value entertainment of any kind and will set aside a budget for it. But you're right. It's not uncommon for someone to call me and say, oh, we don't need much. It's just for the children. Right. We don't need much. So that's, that's really what we hear. It doesn't matter if it's magic or balloons or face painting or comedy. We don't need much. It's just for the children. But no one would ever say, oh, we don't need much. It's just for the CEO of our company. Right. So right. Maybe that's more of a societal uh, issue than, than anything else. Um, so it at the is. end of the day, we say, oh, so you don't actually love those children and that makes them laugh. Uh, of course they do. They just don't want to set aside any money for it. Right. That and hasn't then... actually ever stopped us because when we let people know, well, if you don't, 
put aside money towards the children, a couple of things happen. Number one, if you don't entertain the children at your holiday party or your company picnic, the children will entertain themselves and <laughs> your adult guests will not get to enjoy themselves. Suddenly that's entertainment worth paying. Good for. point. Or if they don't put enough money towards the children, they have a tendency to, to allocate a higher budget for the adults than they do for the children. Uh, if they end up getting stuck with mediocre entertainment because they didn't put enough to get quality entertainment, now they end up having wasted money. And what one event planner told me at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if we saved $300 if we wasted the 400 we did spend. So, but there is a, a different paradigm around what we should spend on our children versus what we spend on ourselves or each other. Well, that's a really good point you made up that if the kids aren't happy, the adults probably aren't going to be happy. That could really destroy a huge party. So that makes uh, and and it does. Yeah, that, <laughs> you've been at that. that haven't makes, you ever been at that one? Oh, absolutely. Family reunion or that holiday party, <laughs> and there's those kids who are running amok because no one thought to take care of what they might need. And they, and if they're really popular now are um, is, is to provide family entertainment, children's entertainers for wedding receptions with more blended families, with more kids coming to weddings. Boy, you you take care of something for the kids, and everybody. See, that's also a very good point because sometimes they, they say that, well, you're just a high-paid babysitter. Well, maybe not high-paid enough if you think about it. <laughs> your wedding is one of the most important days of your life and you want the kids to ruin it, so you might want to budget something towards uh, keeping the kids happy. That's right. And, and what they have to do is get a babysitter and then bring us in. Otherwise, we really are an overpriced babysitter. Well-priced entertainment, overpriced babysitter. Yeah, not a babysitter. Yeah. And our kids are our future CEOs, so... Invest. That's right. <laughs> Let's see, what else did I have here? I had some more questions I was going to ask. Oh, on, for like family entertainers and stuff, pe people that are doing this, I see sometimes on Facebook there's discussions and they're cons they're, the performers are complaining about they wouldn't pay enough. Do you have some tips and things as far as how to do that? For myself, it's about you wh where you plant your seeds. You know, if you plant your seeds in a in a wealthy garden, you're probably going to find people with money and budget to pay for things. If you if you don't, you're probably going to get that. But do you have some insight on that? How can a, a performer, and, and also touching on a little bit of why is it that some performers are charging so much, we kind of covered that a little bit, that it's worth it when you hire a professional. Got it. What was the question? Well, that was a two-fold question. <laughs> it was we're talking a, about money? You going to talk about money? We're talking about money. And, and uh, something for the performers, how can they get the confidence to charge a little bit more to be able to uh, get some respect? Because they, they complain a little bit that I work so hard out in the sun and I only got this much money. How can they kick it up a little bit? Sure. Well, there's a couple things you've described there, and, and I think the answer to the question is in the question itself. You said, how do they have the confidence? And the only way to have confidence in charging more is by charging more. But by not charging enough because they lack the confidence and by getting bookings, they actually reinforce for themselves, this must be all I'm worth. And then when they do try to charge more and then someone says, oh, you know, why is it so much? Then it reinforces, oh, no, I charge too much. And then they become afraid. And it's really about, for me, and I, I know you probably, this will resonate for you, it's about whether or not you're living in an abundance or whether or not you're living in scarcity. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, and obviously the distinction, scarcity is the notion there's not enough. Uh, abundance is the notion there, there is enough and there's sure. enough to go around. Because the very same people who say no one will pay that price, are those are the same artists and entertainers who say there's too many of us, the market is saturated, no one will pay that price. And those are myths. Right. Those are yeah. absolutely myths because, you know, and, and now mind you, I've done this for a very long time. My experience has been there are always people who will pay more for the better things in life. Sure. Always. And as far as... And in every economy. Right now, we're, you know, the economy is good right now for what we do. There are people with, with money, with healthy budgets. We are due for a correction. We, you know, it seems to correct about every eight to ten years. So we're a little bit overdue. The last one we had was in 2008. And the last time that happened... What happened was a lot of good artists and entertainers got scared and either got out of the business or dramatically lowered their rates. And I don't know about you, Brad, but when money is tight, I don't need to make less money. I actually need to make 
more money. Right. <laughs> My bills don't go down just because we're in a recession. Isn't that a strange <laughs> thing? <laughs> so how do you have the confidence to charge more? By charging more. And then don't yeah. give up and don't get deflated when that one person balks or winces. And it is the abundance mentality because you go to any hotel any day and there's a roster of events happening just at a hotel. That's Everywhere. Everywhere. Always. So I got one more question. This is directed more towards planners, but it's also going to help the per performers too. But let's talk a little bit about how a planner can select uh, an entertainer that's going to be of caliber and what things they should be looking for. Like one would be if they're professional, they probably have some insurance because what if, you know, you trip and slip and fall on a little kid or something, somebody's got to take care of that. So I would think planners would have to take that kind of stuff in, into consideration when they're hiring somebody rather than just going, oh, we'll just get Aunt Janie's nephew to do the face painting this year. Mm -hmm. Well, I think event planners, and maybe this is the challenge of the artists and entertainers themselves, is to educate the event planners. Uh, unless you are a career event planner, and most people planning events are not. Most people who are planning events already have a full-time job and were in that committee meeting when they said, hey, Marianne, would you please plan the, the, uh, the, 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 the sales banquet this year? You know, Marianne didn't usually volunteer for that. Bob, Bob didn't really want to do that on top of his other duties. So most event planners might only plan one or two events a year. We, as artists and entertainers, are entertaining at 300, 400, 500 events a year. So it's actually, it falls to us to educate the person who calls us or emails us to let them know what to look for. Event planners, and these days with the internet, you know, anybody can put together a website. Anybody can put together reviews that may or may not even be legit. Wow, Lori was great. 3M. <laughs> Boy, you know, who would know that was or wasn't legit, right? Well, that, so, that last uh, nugget you had was really, really well, good. Planners, they can look at, you know, they, they would have no way of distinguishing the apples and oranges um, just from a website alone. So it's really a right. right. question to ask. You brought up any insurance. That is one criteria. You know, it really comes down to commitment, credentials, quality, and how do you discern those things? Well, you got to ask questions. You can't assume, let's say, you know, you're a magician. Uh, you do magic tricks. Magician X does magic tricks. Well, that's not enough. You know, if I'm an event planner planning, needing a magician for children, I'm going to look for different credentials than yeah. the magician yeah. who's going to come and stroll with the board of directors. Got it. Event planners Event planners do not intuitively have those distinctions, so it's up to us. You made a really good point there. My microphone is making some weird noises here. I hope it doesn't come out in the recording, but if it does, that's life. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's what it is, gurgle, gurgle. Um, as performers, you know, you've got even these professional event planners that do this for a living. As performers, we've probably been to more events than they have. So that's just a, a point yeah. that you that you made. You're right. There, we may have done 500 events where they might have done 50. Right, right. And and by the way, and what we're experts in is what we do. What great event planners. What I so I love working with event planners because they hold, you know, they hold the big picture. They are they're the ones putting together often the caterers, the you know the decor, the headlining entertainment, the background entertainment. They are oftentimes the glue that holds an event together. And my experience with event planners is what they appreciate is an artist or an entertainer who can come in, who can be flexible. Uh, they need artists and entertainers who are not high maintenance. If I'm coming to be a part of a bigger event, the event is not about me, by the way. I am one small cog in one really big machine. So the best thing I can do is you know, give my expertise to the event planner, but I also have to trust that the event planner has the big picture in mind. And oftentimes, and this is probably the biggest challenge for event planners because I am also in that position, is that when I am the event planner, I have to interface with the client over here, and then I have to interface with the other vendors over here, right. and now right. I'm in the middle, and it's a whole lot of a, it's a giant web to try to keep everything together. So if everyone can count on and rely on the expertise 
and trust the expertise of the professionals who are brought in, I think all the events go better. Uh, totally. I, I totally get that. I'm getting warbly again here. What's going on with my microphone? Check one, two, test. I don't know if it's my microphone or just the system, but am I sounding better now? That's better. That's better. Yeah, I've had situations where I'm performing and I end up having to get water or get something. You know, someone lost a napkin, so you end up being a waiter for a little, you know, three minutes while you're doing your thing. Anyways, I'm going to close this one off. If you could tell us how to get a hold of you in case somebody wants to either hire you or, or uh, learn more about your expertise, how do we find you? Super. So uh, we are A Touch of Magic Entertainment. We service three audiences, families and children, teens and treats teens and tweens, and adults at corporate events. Uh, we can be found at atouchofmagicentertainment.com. Again, atouchofmagicentertainment.com on social media. Uh, our handle is at atouchofmagicmn, and you can call us at 651-748-9442. I will put that stuff into this post as I put it up there. Something's weird happening with my uh, internet thing, so I'm going to get off because I'm starting to sound like a monster or something, and I'm not a monster, even though Halloween's coming. Boo! So, <laughs> Lori, I really appreciate you taking the time. Peace, love, and happiness. Thank you very much. I will talk to you soon. I'll beam this up and put it up to the universe. Thanks. Bye. See you later.